Hi everyone, my guest of next episode is Alexandra Anhof, a legal scholar and practitioner working with legal tech for the last seven years, so quite experienced in, in legal tech. Hi Alexandra, great to, uh, great you are here and you joined me. Uh, what, what do you think about uh, significant changes of, of legal tech? How, how do you find uh, AI, generative AI revolutionized it? First and foremost, Mihal, thank you very much for having me. It's, um, it's a pleasure to, to join you for for this podcast. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a good question, right? Because I think that a lot of new legal tech is actually surrounding or is building on um, um, AI or is using some form of an AI because we believe that AI can make us faster and more efficient and all of these kind of things. And now on the wave of all the work that the chat GPT or open AI has um, introduced, I think that there is um, a lot happening and a lot of promises are being made um whether it's you know harvey or whether it's this co-counsel or uh, some other of the legal tech tools that are actually really putting the ai um at the upfront of their product do you think it's more hype or or, or truth uh, how do you find it i think it's a little bit of hype and i think that there are many legal issues actually if you start to think about it critically i think that you know don't get me wrong i'm 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 excited also a little bit scared but more excited about all of the technologies that is that are coming up and about the AI, because, you know, that chat, chat GPT is pretty, pretty cool tool to work with. I think that anyone who has worked with it or tried it out, I think that we like it, right? It's much, much more kind of responsive than, than Google search or any other search tools that we have had. But I think that any law firm or lawyer wishing to use this kind of technology need to understand what is actually behind this technology and not just what are the language modeling processes behind it because i think that we might have challenges with that but how did they build it what kind of data did they use are there yeah. copyright issues and for and foremost i think that's the most important thing when it comes to like open source like or or tools that kind of are like black box including chat gpt what happens with your data so if i'm a lawyer and i'm using it and i'm i'm actually using some form of my own protected data that I wouldn't want necessarily to share, be shared with, with general public. Also what happened in Italy that suddenly the open AI closed um, the tools within Italy. It wasn't that Italy blocked it. No, Italian government or whatever it was, the administrative body just asked the right question. So what do you do with the personal information of the Italian citizens? And unfortunately, open AI wasn't able to answer the question. Uh, aren't you afraid that we in Europe we switch off the GP, chat GPT or, or other tools and will be let's say safe but really slow uh, comparing to the rest of the world? No, I don't think so because I think if you if you think about also the way what Europe has done, it actually has revolutionized the way how we think about personal data. Because if you think also about the legislative changes. I'm not saying that the GDPR is a great law. I think that it has many limitations, but it was a new movement of how we think about the data and how we think about personal data and protecting personal data and protecting privacy. And it has changed also and influenced you as regulators and regulators in South America and in other places. So I don't think so. Okay. And the last question, because you're a scholar, uh, in five years, uh, what's your prediction? Uh, is there going to be more or less uh, law students? I think, I'm not sure that there will be less or more. I think there will be still the same percentage because the lawyers don't do just this question, like what the law says, but how you apply it and how you consider different kinds, how you weight different kinds of things. And, and I think that while uh, GPT is pretty good when it comes to, let's say, Anglo-Saxon legal system because it is built on different kinds of case laws and the case law is very heavy on details and, and can take all these into consideration. I think in our systems, in, in civil law countries in Europe, it's, uh, it's a little bit more challenging to actually use AI based on the laws and then interpret it uh, according to the facts. So I think that we will still have the, the lawyers. I think that AI will, will be there for sure. But I think it will be in a little bit different way that we have it now. Thank you for, for being here. And I hope that everyone enjoyed our discussion. Uh, see you guys next week. And thank you, Alexandra. Thank you.